Good evening. Good to have you with us tonight as we begin our midweek series here in the season of Advent as we'll be taking a look at symbols of salvation. So what we'll be doing the next three weeks is turning back to the Old Testament and seeing God's presence and how that foreshadows God's presence in the flesh uh, in the Savior born on Christmas Day, leading up to Christmas Day. And of course, if you haven't gotten one yet, please take one of these on your way out, as this has all of our Advent services, all of our Christmas Eve services, our Christmas Day service, as well as special uh, events happening here in the month of December here at Zion Wayside um, that you can take with you and post on the fridge for everybody to see. Uh, a few announcements as we get started this evening. Uh, Toys for Tots, first of all, how awesome is it to walk in and see that many gifts already there under the tree? And you have one week left, I believe. Today's the first, right? One week to go. Uh, I've been told uh, Wednesday morning, the 8th, the morning of the 8th is the deadline uh, as they will be picked up sometime in the morning on the 8th. So uh, I believe there are a few ornaments left on the tree. So if you are interested, uh, we would greatly appreciate that you take an ornament and go get a gift to bring it back unwrapped by the morning of Wednesday the 8th. Uh, Advent candlelight is right around the corner as well on the 12th. Um, contact Jennifer Mertz or Sandy Schultz if you are looking for a table or have questions about that. There's a whole lot else going on, uh, including uh, deadlines for poinsettias, as well as the Christmas programs, both day school and Sunday school, live nativity coming up, uh, as well as the Raising Arrows events on the 23rd. So please be sure to take this with you uh, and, and put those dates in your calendars, dates and times, as we have a lot going on in the month of December. For our Advent uh, midweek services, all of our liturgy and hymns will be found on the screens in front of you. And so we join in singing our opening hymn, number 343, Prepare the Royal Highway. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. In this season of penitence and reflection, let us think of our unworthiness and confess before God that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, asking for his merciful forgiveness. God Almighty, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given His only Son, our Emmanuel, to die for us and for His sake, forgives us all of our sins. May the God of peace Himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, by the advent of your Son into this world, the kingdom of heaven now is open to all who believe in him. Give us grace to look for the signs of his coming and to receive the Lord Jesus as our Emmanuel, God with us. By the working of your Holy Spirit, lead us evermore to serve him in our lives until that day when he comes again to claim us as his own for eternity. This we ask in his most blessed name. Amen. Congregation may be seated for our readings. Our Old Testament reading tonight and our first symbol of salvation is the burning bush found in Exodus chapter 3. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet. For the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings. And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression of with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I, that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, But I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you, that I have sent you, when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of our Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. 
And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated as we join in singing our sermon hymn number 338, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, as I mentioned at the beginning of service, our sermon series this season of Advent on our Wednesday nights is entitled Symbols of Salvation, as we will be going back to the Old Testament and seeing the presence of God, seeing the promise of God fulfilled there in that time, and seeing how that foreshadows the coming of the Savior born in the city of David. And I got to tell you, there is no better place to start than the book of Exodus. If there's one book in the Old Testament, there's many. But if there's one particular that I could choose that we would spend more time in, specifically in the Old Testament, it would be the book of Exodus. Because the book of Exodus is the salvation story of the Old Testament. The book of Exodus is the salvation story of the Old Testament. Let's think about that for a second. Everything that happens from there on, all the kings of Israel, all the battles, all the, uh, the, the, the tales of the promised land and things like that, all of that hinges on the book of Exodus. Everything that comes before the promise to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel, all of that hinges on Exodus. None of that happens if the people of Israel aren't delivered from Egypt. The book of Exodus is the salvation story of the Old 
Testament. And so if we're talking about symbols of salvation, let's start there. So we are going to talk about the burning bush, and we're going to see a lot of similarities between Exodus 3 and our gospel reading from Luke chapter 2. But first, to set the scene here in Exodus chapter 3, we have the people of Israel there in the land of Egypt, and uh, things aren't going well. And I have to put it lightly. Things really aren't going well. Pharaoh has seen the people of Israel grow tremendously in number, so much so that he now sees them as a threat. He sees their great number and begins to worry that if Egypt begins to, to, to have enemies and Israel joins forces with their enemies, things are, things are bleak for Egypt. And so he decides to act rather harshly against the people of Israel. And one of those things is he puts them into forced, harsh, harsh, harsh labor. He also puts on very drastic, uh, gruesome measures uh, to kill, frankly, all of the male children born to the nation of Israel. However, one of those male children was spared from this tragic event, and that turns out to be Moses. And Moses ends up being raised in the house of Pharaoh until one day he sees an Egyptian taskmaster oppressing an Israelite, and so he strikes down that Egyptian. And because he did that, there we find him in Midian, where we see in Exodus chapter 3. Now, we don't think of this often in terms of the person of Moses. But what was Moses' profession? You can think of Luke chapter 2, and you'll get the answer. Moses was caring for the flock of his father-in-law. Uh, uh, I'm forgetting the name. What was his name? Jethro. Jethro. He was tending to the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro. So that makes Moses a shepherd. Moses was a shepherd, and as he is tending for the flock, he, he is caring for the flock as they travel to the mountain of Horeb. And, and as they are on the mountain of Horeb, there he sees a bush. And the bush is burning, but it, but it doesn't wither. And he sees how unique this burning bush is. And then he realizes that this is the presence of God. This is the presence of God with his people, with Moses, in a very unique and special way. Now think about the timing of this. This couldn't be at a more crucial time, as we've already talked about what the people of Israel are enduring. They are enduring everything. The most harsh conditions you can think of. Death at their fingertips in the worst way. They truly are in need of salvation. Someone to deliver them from the hands of Pharaoh. Someone to deliver them from Egypt. And God now has come down and is present with his people in a unique and special way. And God speaks to Moses, and he says, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry. I know their sufferings, and I have come to deliver them. We see that God did not come down to bring destruction, to bring devastation. God came down for one purpose, and that is to bring salvation. God came down to be present with his people to fulfill the promise that he made to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. God came down to fulfill the word that he had given to his people. This burning bush is the presence of the same God that will go on to part the Red Sea 
so that the people of Israel can flee from the hand of Pharaoh. This is the presence of the same God that goes on to spare and deliver the people the night of the Passover. As Pharaoh then says, let the people go. This is the same presence of the same God who goes on to provide manna and water for the people as they wander in the wilderness. This is the presence of God that truly brings salvation to his people. This is the presence of God that keeps his word, that keeps his covenant. And now we turn to our gospel reading, and we almost see the same thing. Again, the angel of the Lord appears to shepherds. As the people of Israel are, are living in a Roman occupied land. And the words of the angel to the shepherds speak of the Savior, speak of God's presence once again, being with his people in a very special and unique way. But this time it is not a burning bush, this time it is in the flesh. The angels speak of the presence of God, the true Son of God in the flesh, born to the Virgin Mary in the town of David. And what is the purpose of God's presence in the flesh? It is to bring salvation. It is to fulfill the promise that can be traced all the way back to Adam and Eve. But this salvation is different. While Exodus is the great salvation story of the Old Testament, it is for the people of Israel. It is for God's chosen nation. It was salvation from another country, another nation. It was salvation from Pharaoh. It was salvation from Egypt. This salvation is greater. This salvation is not just for Israel, but it is for all people. This salvation is not from a nation, from a tribe, from a person. This is salvation from sin. This is salvation from death. This is salvation from the things that we have no solution for. This is salvation from the things that we can't deal with ourselves. God kept his promise by sending the word made flesh to bring salvation for all people. And so as we think about Exodus, we remember Exodus 3, God's presence with his people in a special and unique way, in the way of a burning bush. And as he spoke to them and said, I am Yahweh, we hear the name of God. And we see how he delivers the nation of Israel, his chosen nation, out from the hands of the Egyptians, out from the hands of Pharaoh. But we know that God kept his promise in an even better, stronger way. And that is by the Savior born on Christmas Day, born in humility to a virgin in a manger, born to be humble, humble enough to go to the cross, to suffer and die, and take upon himself the punishment that we deserve so that our sins might be forgiven, so that we might be saved from the punishment that we deserved on account of our sins. But he went through his humiliation that he might be glorified, that on the third day he would rise and conquer sin and death. And to this day, he still lives and reigns at God's right hand. And so we hear the great salvation story of Jesus' death and resurrection and what that has accomplished for us. And we hear that word and receive it as truth and wait with hope for the return that we might see that story fulfilled. And so we wait, and we wait with hope 
and that is the hope of eternal life. In the name of Jesus, amen. For our confession of faith uh, this season of Advent, we will be using the Apostles' Creed, but we will be using the Articles of the Creed. And on our first uh, Advent midweek service, we will be confessing the words of the first article, which confess who God the Father is. So at, the, at this time, I invite the congregation to please stand as we join in confessing the explanation to the first article. Together we confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures. That he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wives and children, land and animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, in this season of prayer and preparation, we bring you our petitions. Graciously bless the Church and all the faithful around the world who expectantly await the celebration of the birth of the Christ child. By your Holy Spirit, direct these days that they be for each of us a time of reflection repentance, and preparation for the Savior's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting in your mercy, we pray for the world in which we live and for our nation. Grant that the coming of Emmanuel, God with us, be known in all corners of the world as the good news shared throughout the pages of Scripture is proclaimed once more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remembering the call to prepare our hearts and our lives, we ask that we be blessed with an extra measure of charity in these weeks. Help us to find time to be those people for whom giving in Jesus' name is a way of life. Give us fulfillment and the joy brought to others in thoughtful ways in this special season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In these days, help us to hear the voices of those in need of our aid and comfort. Grant that we find ways to reach out to the lonely, the ill, the hurting, and those for whom these days bring sadness. Give us the spirit to direct our hearts and lives so that each day of our lives is lived to your glory. Lord, in your mercy, in this season of remembering, we call to mind those saints whose earthly journeys have been completed and who now rejoice in the fullness of your eternal care. We thank you for the witness of the prophets and holy writers whose words enlighten and encourage us. In these holy days, let our gladness have no end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. 
In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
please stand for prayer. Almighty God, Judge and King, the whole creation waits for your coming. Come, Lord Jesus, with your grace and fill our lives with your presence. Use all of our time for your gracious purpose. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And receive with believing hearts the blessing of our Lord, the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless you and keep you. Amen. And having been blessed by God, we are now sent to be a blessing. By God's grace, we are equipping generations for life in Christ. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll remain standing as we join in singing our closing hymn, number 349, Hark the Glad Sound. Mm -hmm. 